Hi everyone, welcome into the Rochester Press Box. Bill Pucker with you, and happy to be joined by the guys as usual. Tariq, what's uh, up? It's not over for the Buffalo Bills. I see a little light at the end of that tunnel. It's got to be this weekend, though. Long tunnel. God, I'm impressed that you fit into a high school jersey. Oh, First of all, goodness. how dare you? Second no, of all, Merry Christmas. I'm impressed, I said, not surprised. Well, it's a 45, it's a 48, so let's not get too impressed. No, uh, high school basketball is back in section five. Got the late 90s uh, Aquinas. Little Irish basketball jersey today to celebrate. All right. You don't know who. Is that like game worn who? Oh, it's game worn. All right. You? Well, I mean, in low summer leagues where they needed 5,000, a guy that can take a charge, I was your man. Because oh. when you wear number 40 <laughs> outside of Sean Kemp, all you do is take charges. Yeah, <laughs> you got to be tough. So the Buffalo Bills off a of bye week still managed to lose ground. Because uh, with Cincinnati winning, they fell to 11th. Now, it's not over with yet. And this is why, the, if anybody's watched, the quarterbacks in the AFC have all gone down and sort of leveled the playing field a little bit. We're talking about Lawrence went down with a high ankle sprain. We're talking Burrow was done for the year. So now they're relying on backup quarterbacks. The Bills, thank goodness, knock on wood, Allen stays healthy. I think there's a, they're in the hunt right now. They're not in the playoff picture, but they've got a chance. They've had a chance in these last few games, but it has to start in Kansas City. The league has come back to them a little bit. Yeah, but part of the problem, I mean, part of the problem is that a lot of those guys are playing each other. Yeah. All well, these teams with the backup quarterbacks are facing each other and someone's got to win. Yeah, this is true, but for Buffalo, there's a window, an opportunity. Okay, there, there, there's been an opportunity. And look, I hate this. That they've all, missed. All week I've been here in your 11th place. You know that doesn't, you've been around long enough where you know that doesn't matter. You get to 10 wins, you're in. I mean, that's how this works now with the 17 game schedule. And they have a path to 10 wins. I, you get this win in Kansas City. Okay, you got, so you're 6-6 six and six as we speak. Yes, yeah, so you get this win in Kansas City. You got Dallas coming to Buffalo, West Coast team coming east. Then you have uh, Los Angeles, not good. New England, not, not good. good. And Miami, who Buffalo, for whatever reason, just has had their number for the last six years. Like, I sit here confident as a Bills fan, as I have been for weeks. You guys are going to look so silly. Oh, God. So silly. Well, we're not saying that it's not going to happen. Oh, but I heard We're just not of, saying definitively of... that it's going to like you do. I and you have a win this week for Buffalo all the way. Oh, I mean, we'll get into it more. Yeah, I mean, look, again, if we look at the history of these two teams the last couple of seasons, there should be confidence. Not to mention, you ready for this? Here's your stat of the day to make you feel great as a Bills fan. Sean McDermott, as head coach of the Buffalo Bills, is 6-0 and coming off a of bye week. And he's done it twice against the Kansas City Chiefs on the road in Arrowhead. What is there not to be confident about? The sign of a good coach. I mean, the, the, the people pay attention to records coming off a of bye week with the extra week to prepare. Uh, you know, God, I want to talk about that game, but we have to wait till the second second. I, but I, it's going to be so much fun. But it's it's quite interesting the way the AFC is sort of pictured out right now. If the if the playoffs before these games are played uh, going into this weekend, Miami will be the number one seed. But as Duffy just said, and I agree a hundred percent, over the next three or four weeks, that could flip flop either way. Miami, their last three weeks. Have you seen that schedule? You keep telling us. Baltimore, <laughs> Dallas, Buffalo. It's possible that Miami could go from, and this is not out of the question, Miami could go from the number one overall seed to not winning the AFC East in those last three weeks. Last season they went, I believe it was 0-4 in December. This year, so far, one win. We'll wait and see what happens with Tennessee. That's a little bit stilted because they didn't have their starting quarterback doing it. But again, Miami has not beaten a team over 500 since week three of last year, and that's the Bills game in Miami when everybody got hurt and everything went haywire. Show me Miami beating a good team, and then I'll stand back and go, okay, it got something. It's really easy. Trust me, as a Bills fan, I know, to run up 40 points on the Washington Commanders. Do the numbers worry you? I mean, when we talk about the, the, the Bills-Dolphins scenario, it's three games. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you pick your three. Sure. They're three behind. They can't lose any more ground, and yeah. their schedule is at least as tough. Uh, no, I agree with you. Look, three games. Three games in the NFL is a ton of games. There is a whole bunch of landing strip left for this season, but I get it, right? We all think it's a week-to-week -week league that we know everything that's going on as soon as things are over. Nobody had the Bengals with a backup quarterback taking out the Jags. Oh you God. can make the argument about uh, <laughs> Trevor Lawrence, but he was in that game until five minutes left in the fourth quarter, and it was going back and forth the entire time. Nothing is set in stone. The Texans could fall away. I think the Steelers fall away. I think that the Colts fall away. Feeling good. So you ready to talk about the game? I'm looking forward to it. I believe in <laughs> Buffalo this week, but it has to be against KC and KC. All righty, Greg Connors is going to join us, and we'll make our picks next here on the Rochester Press Box. Just passing through life lessons from notable Rochesterians, people you may think you know. 
Don Alhart, Maggie Brooks, John Dady, and Stacey Pension, J. Mack and Soccer Sam, Fred Costello, and Jake Zembeck, along with 21 more. How they all got from there to here. It's a new book by Bill Pucko, available for $12 postpaid only from rocksportsnow.com. Try it, and thank you. Our NFL pick segment in the Rochester Press Box, brought to you by Connors and Ferris, your trusted and dedicated workers' comp attorneys and official sponsor of the Buffalo Bills. Welcome back. Thanks for joining us here in the Rochester Press Box. Our pick segment brought to you by Connors and Ferris, your workers' comp attorneys. And Greg Connors joins us. Greg, welcome in. Uh, league leader by the one loss record. Actually, when you look at these things when... Uh, when Joe posts them, they're incredible. These are, these are against the point spread picks for two every week. I, you know, I think you guys are brilliant. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, as Duffy so, said us, earlier this year, beginner luck for me. Oh, yeah. I agree, I agree 100%. Yes. All right, of course he would. <laughs> hey, look, uh, get us into the Bills Chiefs game. Buffalo coming off a bye, uh, clearly a, a game that they have to have. Yeah, the way everything is sh shaken up this past week in the NFL, particularly the AFC, the Bills have to have a win here against Kansas City. They've got 8-0 coming off of a bye week. I hope they can continue it to 9-0. This is a huge game for the Bills Mafia. we got to go Bills. Okay, Tariq? Uh, I agree. I think the, the time, the rest, the reorganization offensively, more time with your new offensive coordinator, uh, the defense, and then the way McDermott prepares, too, off of a weak rest is unbelievable. Bills have to have it. They need it. Kansas City's not the same Kansas City. It should be fun, but Bills win. That unbeaten off the bye week is really shocking. I know you brought it up, and Greg just b backed it up. But Ten-second story. The first week that Sean McDermott was the head coach of the Buffalo Bills, the first game they were going to do, they practiced driving to the stadium, getting dressed, and then leaving. That's a thing that really happens. So preparation matters to him, and you see it in records like that. Look, the Bills need this game, so I got the Bills, and I got them with the two and a half there. That being said, the only thing that scares me is the Chiefs losing last yeah. week in Green Bay. Back-to-back -back losses for both of these teams don't lose back-to-back -back games normally. Somebody's going to. Something's fallen. I still like the Bills. KC has lost a couple of guys in that game injury-wise. Buffalo, a few extra days to prepare. We'll make it a sweep. I like Buffalo with a two and a half, too. Greg, pick us another game. I'm going, I'm taking what I'm calling the Vegas sucker bet. It's the Detroit Lions three over the Bears. I don't think the Bears can score enough points, and I do think Detroit is going to be hot right now. They, they've got to win. They've got to come down the stretch strong. So I'm going with Campbell, minus three and a half Detroit, in the yeah, Lions. Detroit, uh, given the points. They won for me last week. Tariq, uh, yeah, he battling went, at the top with Greg. He, he went with the one, the one of the two games I was interested in, the other game I was interested in. I don't know what it is, watching Hard Knocks in season. I think Miami. And, and the crazy part about this is Miami taking on Tennessee, so I'm picking Miami. I'm nervous about the 13, but I'm going to sit with it. I think they're favored by 13 points offensively. I'll write it out. I think they'll win by more than that. Oh, Greg, my friend, you've made a fatal mistake. <laughs> the Lions, I like the Lions. I love the Lions story. They have shown they are not legitimate winners in the NFL yet, and they've been going back and forth. I, t I picked against them a couple weeks ago when they wrote it. I think the Bears are better. I think the Bears are now desperate. They're playing for jobs next season, not only the coaches, but the quarterback. I think the Lions showed that they can give up points in a matter of seconds because it's not like that Saints offense was anything good, and they started hanging stuff on them in the second half. I like the Bears, and we're closing the gap to end the season. No, we're not over yet. That'll, that'll bring it to within. No, I'm saying yeah, as we go, we're getting there. This is going to be such a good win. <laughs> I think the 49ers are really full of themselves. Uh, they're giving 10.5 at home against Seattle. Uh, Seattle's got a little extra time to prepare. I'm going to take the Seahawks with the 10.5. So, Greg, that gives you a chance to wrap this segment up. This is going to set the stage for the remainder of the season, and I think they come out strong. I think the defense actually holds up at the, at the end of this game, which will be a huge surprise for us Bills Mafia fans. And let's go, Bills. Alrighty, so we ended something positive. That's good. Greg, thanks for joining us. Uh, our pick segment was brought to you by Connors and Ferris. Like it or not, is next. Here's the Press Box trivia question brought to you by Market View Liquor, where exceptional customer service meets an extensive selection. Jefferson Road. 
Maybe you've been here before. Maybe this is your first time. It's always a great getaway. Michael Ryan, your getaway guy. I'll take you inside the gorge at Watkins Glen. Look for the getaway guy on Facebook. Here's the Press Box Trivia Answer, brought to you by Market View Liquor, where exceptional customer service meets an extensive selection. Jefferson Road at 390. Welcome back. Thanks for joining us here on the Rochester Press Box, our Like It or Not segment, brought to you by Sport Clips, where the MVP experience is better than ever. Sport Clips is a game changer, no appointment needed. Stop by a Rochester location today. Uh, well, you know, we've had a week to kind of let it simmer down, but <laughs> the, the whole Alabama-Florida State thing in the college football poll, like it or not, hey, Alabama's hey, in, Florida State's out. Hey, listen, uh, Tallahassee's not letting this simmer. They're going to just ride this all out, complain all the way. You know what? Show up in the bowl game, especially a team from the ACC. Show up in the bowl game, whip who you're going to play. It doesn't matter who it is. You can't change it. There's no six team in there. There's no eight teams in there. There's just four. Now, College football has finally done the smart thing. They want the best teams with the most loyal fans and the craziest scenario possible. And you know that was Alabama. Couldn't be Georgia because Georgia lost to Alabama. So it had to be them. They want Nick Saban. They want villains like Michigan. They want teams in there, and they got the four they want. No, I love Tariq's new NCAA football schedule ne next year where you just print out the rosters. You don't do anything for four months, and mm -hmm. you put the four best teams in there. It's a joke. It's an absolute joke, and I'll tell you why. First of all, not only Alabama, they don't deserve to be in, neither does Texas. Texas got in to justify Alabama getting in at four. Those kids in Tallahassee were robbed and more than just in a like inspiring, like, oh, you can't play the game. You know how much money you cost those kids, both in NIL deals and potential draft places? That's an extra game those kids could have played to showcase for the NFL if they won that first one. That defense is good. And the argument has been, two mm. arguments for Alabama or against uh, Florida State is they didn't beat Louisville by enough. Mm -hmm. That Alabama team almost lost to USF. Boy, I lost. I watched that Louisville game and it was horrible. Okay, horrible. did you watch the USF Alabama game? It was worse. I promise you, because I watched it live. Do you know what college football is? It's a TV show. They're trying to get the most okay. fans, the craziest situations. Okay. Nick Saban, Alabama brings a big audience. That's what this is about. On the they surface of it, with the history of this of of the playoffs. To, to leave out the SEC champion would be unconscionable. But why? Because be they do so well. Because they've proven their medal year after year after year no, after no, no, year no, no, that they belong in but there. But that's what's brilliant about NCAA, right? With but FSU is playing Syracuse and Duke. What's your point? They, play, they are playing the teams that are in their conference. And by the way, the way you're talking, you sound like a guy that wants FSU to go take a run to another conference, a bigger conference. A three That would work. Super and then they lose conference. three or four games. How do you know? I think that they got it. You know, I like it and I think they got it perfect. I think yeah. they got the right four teams. So the let's right move, place. I'm let's, sorry, go ahead. Let's move on. Uh, like it or not, the week Zach Wilson had. I think that Zach Wilson is smart to not want to go out there and play football. I think Zach Wilson made the prudent decision. I think that Aaron Rodgers coming out and saying, oh, no, that didn't yeah. happen with the writer pushing back. Go, oh, no, my sources say that it did. Would you want to go out and play for a Jets team that has no offensive line, a coach that has lost complete control of the locker room? By the way, that same coach benched you, uh, what, seven weeks into your second season of the NFL after he drafted you second overall on a roster that was completely handpicked by Aaron Rodgers that is collapsing as we speak with an offensive coordinator they cannot coach. Oh, by the way, also got You right. can't there, say you don't want to play. But there's so many rumors here. There's, <laughs> there's multiple media people that have released information. One in New York who released text messages that he said back to him, uh, uh, Robert Sala and him, revealed them on the air. There's all these discussions about whether or not Wilson wanted to play. And let me just say this. If Wilson did not want to play, who would be upset with that? I would not be. I know ex-players are going to get out of here and say, you're going to play for the team. Really? You wouldn't want to be behind that offensive line? Sal's opening statement, wasn't that precious? And he comes on and says, if this really happened, he wouldn't be on the team. Well, yeah, I think oh, you, you mean, like, should be on you the team. You took him off the team at the end of last season. He was undressed. <laughs> you say you can't say you want to play. That was your statement? Yeah. Or you can't say you, can't, you don't want to play. Why? What does he have left to prove in New York? They've sat you down twice. Both of that, not your fault. Now, he's not a great quarterback. Don't get me wrong. He has money to be made. This is his job. Why would I go out? and risk injury. Remember the Mike White game in Buffalo mm -hmm. last season mm -hmm. when he got sat down? That man was broken in a half, and that's not a figure of speech. 
I need to make a living for me for the rest of my life. My NFL career could go three, four years. I may be making league minimum next year. I'm not risking that for you playing carousel with guys that were on the practice squad. The Jets totally screwed this up. They had an opportunity after Aaron Rodgers went down to go get a quarterback. They had seven weeks to do it. They didn't do it. They let their defense down. They let their team down. They let their fans down. You thought that Zach Wilson's situation couldn't have gotten worse. I think he he just made it worse. He makes himself almost unmarketable. I disagree with you 100%. I think NFL G and owners understand the dysfunction that's going on in New York. The thing the Jets should have done was cut him loose at the end of last season, whether it's through a release or a trade, keeping him on that roster, doomed not only him, but the rest of that team. I do not blame that kid a bit. I, I, I think he holds a clipboard for the next two years and gets another chance. Wow. Yeah, I think he may be done. Mm-hmm. I like it or not segment brought to you by Sport Clips. Unfinished Business is next. The Press Box Stat of the Week is being brought to you by McArdle's Restaurant in Fairport. Come home to McArdle's. And now to Eichel. He floated one. Welcome back. Thanks for joining us here on the Rochester Press Box. It's time for Unfinished Business. Pat Starnes. Although the Sabres are just a game off the pace they were at this point last season, as we tape it, things are not good in Saberland, and fans are very upset. Some are calling for Donnie Meatballs, Donnie Granato, the head coach's head. Get him out of there. They went the GM gone. They want to know why more moves weren't made and why you relied on a step forward from the men inside the franchise. And I'm here to tell you, take a breath. And I know that it sounds like a stupid thing for as long as you've been waiting to get back in the playoffs, but the right move from the general manager was to give this team of young guys a season to take a step forward and see who is a legitimate NHL player. Going out and spending money this season was not the way to do it. You're figuring out your goaltending situation with Devi, Devin Levi, Uka Pekalukin, and an Eric Comrie. Next year, you have Kyle Poso, your captain, salary, coming off the books. Zemgis Gergensen, guy that's been there over a decade, he's coming off the books. That's two spot for potential free agents or younger guys. If you spent the money this year and things went the way they were going right now, it would be a disaster. Now you are fully, truly finding out what is there with your team. And not to mention the guys that can play, your core, your cousins, your Tage Thompsons, your Jeff Skinner, your Alex Tuck. They're under contract, and they're under contract for a while. Take a deep breath. We've been doing this for 12 years. We can last one more if things don't turn around. I've got a show for you. It's been on the last couple of weeks, and it's in season. It's the Miami Dolphins Hard Knocks in season. Let me explain to to you. I love Mike Tomlin as a coach in the NFL. And I love my coach as a New York Giants fan, Brian Dable, but Mike McDaniels is right after him. And let me just tell you this, the guy is a genius. Why? He relates to his players. He gets the buy-in. Yeah, he's got all the talent, but that's the organization getting him the talent. Tua as a quarterback, I don't know what he was like before McDaniels got there, but he seems like he loves and loves playing for this organization. Watch the first three episodes of this season. If you haven't watched it yet, I highly recommend it. Listen, McDaniels just seems like he's able to relate to this team. There's a lot to build off with Miami. I get it, Bills fans. You hate me for saying to watch this team, but go watch McDaniels. He's kind of like a Pete Davidson head coach in the NFL Hmm. with the personality that he has. I don't know why it works. I love yelling at head coaches that are mean and upset, but this guy I'd play for. Moral dilemmas, how we define our values. How are we perceived? The Buffalo Bills figure to have to do some soul searching soon. And in some well-appointed backroom meeting place, the process has probably already begun. What to do with Vaughn Miller? Last week, the Buffalo Bills linebacker turned himself into authorities in Dallas to answer an arrest warrant on a charge of alleged domestic violence. This is a hot button issue in the National Football League. Teams deal with it on sort of a sliding scale. Had last week's news been about Puna Ford or Kingsley Jonathan, third stringers, it is quite possible that they'd be out looking for work right now. But this is Vaughn Miller, the future Hall of Famer, the prize free agent signing of just a year ago. We all remember Ray Rice and the elevator video of him punching his girlfriend. That ended Rice's career in 2013, but it wasn't an issue with the Baltimore Ravens claiming any moral high ground. Rice's career was almost over anyway. The incident only greased the skids, look around. Kareem Hunt and Sean Watson are still playing in Cleveland. Jerry Judy is still a Denver Bronco, all with checkered pasts, but they're still useful. The alleged victim in the Miller case denies there's an issue, says no one assaulted anyone. But should the league decide to suspend Miller off that police report, 
He gives Buffalo some options. Vaughn has struggled to regain his form after suffering a season-ending knee injury last year. And at age 34, he isn't apt to be the player he once was ever again. Miller is a diminishing asset. The Bills could realize significant salary cup savings if they were to release him for violating the league's personal conduct policy. If presented with the opportunity, does Buffalo choose to take advantage of an unfortunate incident or stand by their guy? What would you do? That is our Unfinished Business, and that is our program. What's your problem with McDaniels? What do you mean? <laughs> what, the guy's a clown. What, what do you mean? mean? What are you talking about? He's got young players that love him down in Miami. He's like that kid in the neighborhood that nobody liked, but your mother made you play with him, and then he thinks he's really cool because he but, did. But it's your path to hate every other coach in the AFC. East. Oh, no, I agree with you there, but I don't think it has anything to do with that. It's all smoke and mirrors. I hated him in San Francisco. Who do you too. hate more than Belichick, Salah, or him? I don't really hate Belichick Great anymore. Answer. You don't uh, hate Belichick anymore? Salah. Really? Done. Yeah. Thanks for joining us here in the Rochester Press Box. We'll see you again next week. I don't hate though. Belichick anymore. You're a Bills fan. You're going to hate well, him they're forever. not good enough to hate yeah, him Yeah, he's a tragic figure at this point. He was never good to begin with. It's like the Emperor had no clothes the entire time. <laughs> <laughs>